Often, listening to airline radio chatter, particularly to air traffic control, you'll hear radio transmissions using the term heavy. Okay, direct to Copenhagen, FedEx 334 heavy. Over you one. Let's stop the 401 heavy, contact Kenny Tau, 123.9. That's all, 681 heavy. Prince, this one heavy, maintain 3000 and um, flex the bus, know what you need. It has a fairly literal meaning, referring to the aircraft's maximum takeoff weight, but it also indicates something else the amount of turbulence a plane might leave in its wake. Let's explore the meaning and usage of this term. In the United States, there are four classes of aircraft – small, large, heavy and super. Only the terms heavy and super are commonly used. In a 2015 document, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, defines small aircraft as those with a maximum takeoff weight of 41,000 pounds or less. Large aircraft are defined as those with a maximum takeoff weight between 41,000 pounds and 300,000 pounds. The FAA defines heavy aircraft as those with a maximum takeoff weight of 300,000 pounds or more. These heavy aircraft don't have to be operating at that weight, but they still get designated as heavy. Only the Airbus A380 and Antonov AN225 are designated as super aircraft. The ICAO has a slightly simpler way of categorizing aircraft. Light aircraft are those with a maximum takeoff weight of 15,500 pounds or less. Medium aircraft are those that weigh between 15,500 pounds and 300,000 pounds, while heavy aircraft are those weighing 300,000 pounds or more. On this level, these designators are simply one way of classifying aircraft by size. However, there's a practical reason for doing this as well. Generally, the bigger the plane, the more significant the wake turbulence. Wake turbulence is rotating air produced by an aircraft's wing as it takes off or lands. The more intense the turbulence, the greater the danger for the following aircraft. Usually, when identifying the plane to ATC, pilots will add the heavy descriptor to indicate that they should put some space between their plane and the next plane. If you're on a small commuter turboprop, you'll need miles of separation between your flight and an A380 preceding you. Get too close and the wake turbulence can literally flip a light plane. On the other hand, two small commuter aircraft don't need much separation at all. That said, the aforementioned 2015 FAA document specifies how much distance ATC should put between planes. If you're a small plane following a super aircraft, the minimum spacing is 8 nautical miles. Even a heavy aircraft like a Boeing 747-400 following a super aircraft gets a minimum spacing of 6 nautical miles. Naturally, the minimum distance reduces as the maximum takeoff weights get smaller. A large aircraft following a heavy aircraft only needs 5 nautical miles. A heavy aircraft following another heavy aircraft only needs a space of 4 nautical miles. A small turboprop following a Boeing 747 needs a minimum distance of 6 nautical miles. It doesn't matter who a super aircraft follows, they can comfortably tag along behind with a spacing of just 2.5 nautical miles. Therefore, while the term heavy refers to the maximum takeoff weight of the plane, it's also used as a warning for other aircraft in the vicinity to give the plane some distance. Like so many things in aviation, it's all about safety. Did you know about the meaning and usage of this term? Let us know in the comments. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.